Fjords Woodshop is sponsored by Minimax and by I Would Like. Check out their products at iwouldlike.com. Okay, so since moving into this workshop, I've wanted to build a big assembly table or workbench that I could just wheel around and do everything on. And I've been in here for, I don't know, six, seven months or something like that. And I'm only just getting around to it. Now, I haven't really got a plan as such. I don't have anything set in stone yet, but I do know that I want it to be the same height as the rest of my benches, so 900 millimeters. I want it to be on wheels and I have these really big heavy duty uh, wheels for that. So when it's locked in, it should be nice and solid. And I also know I want it to be the size of a full sheet of plywood. So I've got a couple of these sheets here, which I got. Uh, these are seconds of MDF, which have a really nice uh, quality melamine on it. So I'm going to use two sheets of that for the top. It'll give it a little bit of rigidity, a little bit of strength. And I've also got all of this pine here, which I bought several years ago. Um, which has just sat in the bench. It's not very nice, it's not very clear. So I thought I might as well use some of that and make a really sturdy mobile workbench. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm just cutting down the long sections to their final length, at least a closer length. So I want about a hundred mil overhang on all four edges from the top. So I'm just cutting these down to be 2,200 mil long as a full sheet of plywood is 2.4 meters long. Okay, so from there you can kind of see what the plan is. So we'll make a frame with a large stretcher and then the legs get housed in there. But we don't need these stretchers to be this thick. This is ridiculous. So what I'm going to do is out of each one of these pieces, I'm going to cut one side down to 120 mil wide and whatever the off cut is will be the lower support sections. Now doing that, you could do it a number of ways. I've got a new track saw that I want to play with, so I'm going to do it on that. But you know, a table saw or whatever would do the exact same thing, obviously. The thing about the track saw, is I've got a three meter rail, which is dead straight. So it doesn't matter if these boards aren't straight or warped because whatever edge I cut is gonna be dead flat. And that's gonna be the space that, um, you know, goes against the top. So even if this beam is warped, it won't matter. Yes, so that worked quite nicely. So I've reset for the second long piece and then we'll do the exact same with the shorter pieces and we'll be left with plenty of material. Okay, so now that all of the pieces actually have a straight edge I'm going to take it over to the miter saw and trim them down to their final lengths. Now the lengths don't really matter as long as the long pieces are the same length and the short pieces are the exact same length we're going to be able to work around it. So. Okay so here you can kind of see the basic idea. So this would be the top we make a frame, these pieces would obviously be leveled with the top, so it's supporting the uh, substrate. And then in the corners is the leg. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna glue these end pieces in and then uh, nail it all together using my framing gun. Uh, I've got a framing gun, but if you didn't have one of them, just long screws, that's all you really need. Uh, I'll let that set up for a little bit and then we'll actually go on to getting some legs installed on this thing. Okay, so that's the top frame done and the bottom frame is exactly the same, except this time I'm only putting one uh, support in the middle instead of two, just as it's just gonna be a shelf. It's not gonna hold that much weight, uh, at least not really. So, let's do that. Now for the legs, I'm just using these old uh, coals. I think it's probably like a pine or something, not too sure, uh, but whatever it is, I'm just going to be cutting it down to be a little bit oversized, so maybe 750 mil. Uh, I'll then take it to the jointer and square up two edges, and that gives me a nice square reference surface for the uh, outside corners of the legs. I don't care about the inside corners. And then I'll trim it to its final length, just like we did everything else. So I'll set up a stop block, and that will ensure that all four legs are the exact same height. So we've got our four legs, which are the two square faces. They go onto the inside corners of our frame here. So this is the lower frame, and uh, this wasn't quite perfectly level. So what I've done is I've just shimmed the corner so it has no rock. So at least when the legs are put in like that and screwed, they'll be sitting on the floor here, and everything should be level once we put the top frame on. At least that's the theory. So what we're gonna do, we'll glue it, lots of nails, uh, and then also clamp into the corners. Uh, and we should be good. Okay, so now for the fun part, and that's getting the top frame on. So I'm gonna put glue on the faces first, carry it over, 
get it all nice and flush to the top here, clamp it, and then shoot some nails, and hopefully it will go smoothly. Who knows? So when I drove the last nail in here, it actually split this bit of timber and it's raised this section up quite a bit. So I'm just going to uh, flatten that out using my hand plane and then we can actually get on with it. And I flipped the base over uh, just so I could get these caster wheels on. So I am going to be putting it kind of just on the outside corners. So I'll just trace the holes and uh, yeah, put it on. So. I'll do that on all four corners. I'll pre-drill the holes and I'm just using lag screws to actually secure it. Okay, so that's the uh, base part finished and just checking it for level it all looks really good so I'm happy with that so now all I have to do is put the top on this um, and I mean one sheet would be enough but as I've got them here I'm just going to put two sheets down so I've got a sheet of raw MDF that I'll grab now and then I've also got a nice um, melamine one which will resist all the finish and things like that. Okay. okay so I've got the top so it's fairly close to being centered all around so all I'm going to do is drive a screw in to this one side here and that will give me a point to pivot on and then I'll just even it up. If there's a slight discrepancy between the sides it doesn't really matter um, it's just a workbench, but we'll get it as close as we can. So that's the sub top. That was the easy part because that's light, but the next part is really heavy. And that is this full sheet of double sided um, melamine MDF. So there's two sides to this, there's one which is gloss and I think that would just get a little bit scratched up too easily so I'm going to go with the matte finish. Um, but yeah, ideally I'd have a couple of people to help with this one. Okay. So all I'm doing now is just going around and actually securing the top to the uh, sub top I guess you'd call it. Okay, so there we have it, a really nice mobile workbench. So it's a full size uh, sheet, it's the perfect height so everything is level in the workshop. So, you know, I can use this as an in feed or out feed table for the table saw, extra support at the workbench, and all that sort of stuff. And when I do lock the casters in, which I've done now, you can see it's still pretty solid. So. Uh, I can really put a lot of pressure on this and it doesn't budge, so even if I do want to use it for things like hand planing, it shouldn't be an issue. A few things that I do want to do to finish it off, but I haven't got anything to do it with at the moment, is edge banding. So I'll put a solid bit of trim on the side just to protect the edge here. I won't glue it in or anything, it will just be kind of nailed on, and that means that if I do want to replace this top, it's not a really big task to do it. And the other thing I want to do, is just put a shelf on the bottom there, but I don't have a spare sheet of MDF or plywood at the moment. Uh, so for now, we're gonna call it finished, but really simple, took maybe three hours, if that, to do, um, and it was pretty cheap. So I use some fairly large uh, pine, which I bought years ago, so that's kind of a write-off. And these top sheets were actually cover sheets of other MDF, um, panels, so these only cost about $10 each, so I think my investment was maybe about $50 all up, and that's including the hardware, because everything else was stuff I had on the shelf or left over from old 
items. Now, if you want a workbench like this and you just want some plans to kind of help you along, I will be doing a SketchUp model. So there's a link in the description below to where you can download that. Uh, you can get it for free or you can also add a donation to it. So if you add a two, three, four, five dollar donation, helps out a lot, it helps pay rent, helps keep the lights on and helps keeps these videos coming your way. So uh, anything you can do to help uh, the show go is greatly appreciated. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, make sure you click that thumbs up button and leave a comment below. And if you haven't already, make sure you click that subscribe button so you stay up to date with all my videos as I am putting them out almost every week. Now, if you are an existing subscriber and you haven't been getting notified of all my videos, head over to my channel and check that you've got be notified of new uploads because apparently uh, some older subscribers, when YouTube did their update, it turns that off. So you may not be seeing it in your feed or whatever. So um, either way, just double check those settings. And like always, I'll see you on the next video.